Both 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 the, the publishers that we're talking about today are like, I mean, when you say handy, they are indie. They are tiny. Yeah, I mean, well, now that's a perfect way to, to switch into the one that I'm going to be talking about today, Joe. And I'm actually talking about a book from Heavy Metal, which I, I don't know that I've ever read anything from Heavy Metal to the point where it doesn't say Heavy Metal on the cover. It says Virus. It's, it says Virus, which is like, an, I don't know if that's an imprint. Like the, the the writer's imprint or or whatever, um, but definitely like I, I was confused by that. But it's definitely from Heavy Metal. Maybe Virus is part of it because there are other Virus books. If you look in the back, they got a lot of ads for other books. But I'm talking about Never Never today, um, which got recommended. You know, it's funny, Joe. I I forgot about this. Uh, it got recommended to me by my guy at my local comic shop in uh at the time capsule in seekonk so another one that would not have picked up didn't even know this book existed until my guy had recommended it to me um so never never is written by mark mccann art the artist is phil uh buchenheim uh buchenham um colors by agnes poza uh letters from dave withers and then i don't we don't normally talk about who did the covers but i do want to mention that the covers were, were by chris lair one issues one through five um because you can see one right now in my background uh this is the cover of issue four and you can kind of get an idea who this might be you know Joe, if me having given you a little bit of context about the book previously but these covers are wild um def definitely different from the art but that did not bother me whatsoever because this this is a little bit too i guess epic to have this be the, the every page art but it's definitely the you know, I, I love it. Um, I, I love the, the cover work. But anyways, um, as I mentioned, this is a five issue series. Um, there's, there, there's absolutely more uh, to this story if they want to dig into it. Um, you know, I don't know if, how many more arcs they could necessarily do, but they, they could go farther with it if they wanted to. But it would be a lot different. Um, a lot of different things would be going on if they decided to do a second arc. Um, the, the, ending, the ending is... It's kind of like open ended, I guess. I'll leave it at that. I don't want to, you know, jump too far about talking about the open, the ending, um, because obviously we want to avoid spoilers. But the synopsis for this: Winter is seduced by the boy Sprite, Petros, off to Never Never, a place where children never grow up and adults are the enemy. What would such a place look like? Where where, where resources are scarce, time passes, but age is obsolete. War with adults starved and insane from constant battle is the norm <clears throat> what would ageless boys free of civility and role models be willing to do to survive to live forever a young girl will face her greatest test an island full of immortal cannibals with a dark secret that sustains its existence in the most unnatural and awful of ways if you didn't get the vibe already the best way to sum up never never joe like you've done so perfectly with um, with Saga and calling it, uh, what is it, um, Romeo and Juliet on acid. This is fucked up Peter Pan. <laughs> and that may have been the way it was pitched to me when my guy at the comic shop told me about it. Um, but either way, I was like, what? Um, I, I think I saw the, the third cover. I don't know what it was, but either way, wild. Um, so winter, we're not talking about the season. Winter is effectively Wendy from the original Peter Pan story. Petros is Peter Pan. There is Creator Croc, which is essentially TikTok the Croc. Um, for those who, you know, if you don't know all these Peter Pan references, I don't know what to tell you. Like, go read a book or something. Um, but um, t uh, we have Tiger, who's effectively Tiger, who's Tiger Lily, which that one's like the, the least change we see. We have Butcher, who's also referred to as Hook, but he's, he's, like, he's definitely Butcher is what he's known by first. Um, we see, we don't see him until a little bit later in the story. Same goes for Hellabel, who's supposed to be Tinkerbell. Um, we also have Tristavale and, um, Madigail, who are other, uh, Tinkerbell-like characters. And as I mentioned, you know, this is, th this is called the Never Never. The title is Never Never. This is the Never Never, which is essentially Never Neverland. Um, a little so on the nose. Little on, yeah, a little on the nose with some of this, but honestly, this stuff is so outrageous in this book, Joe, that it's like, it, it makes sense. Like, you're not trying to hide what you are. You are supposed to be yeah. fucked up, Peter Pan, and it's supposed to be really weird, and it absolutely is really weird. And, and like, a few notes from the first issue. Um, so, like, the, the very first page, you see Winter about to be sacrificed to a bunch of mangy-looking kids 
um, to a to, to the creator croc. That's the very first page, and then we're getting then we're finding out that Winner is an only child. Her parents are having issues. Don't know what the root is, but we learn pretty quickly that her and her dad have a close relationship. I'm not exactly entirely sure what the nature of it is, but there's, it's close in some capacity. Um, but then Petros, like Peter Pan, is offering her a chance to escape and you know go off on an adventure. But like she's going to find happiness in this place. Find out pretty quickly that he's lying and that Petros is a bit of an asshole. Um, that might be an understatement. Um, it's in this world is like so sick and twisted. And then you know, and along the way in this first issue too, like I, I, we, it was mentioned in the synopsis, but we find out you can't die in this world and we see what Petros does with that and it's just like an absolute <laughs> mess. It's, it's real bad. I mean, this guy this is a he's a he's a real bad guy. Real bad guy. Like slick back hair and everything, real piece of shit. Um but um Winter, you know, as you know, as we go along in the story, Turns out to be a pretty important character to the island, but for pretty much two different reasons, not exactly the same. Um, as for the art style, um, the art stylings of uh, Philip uh, Buchenheim, Buchenham, I think as I say it, um, it's, it's very raw, but it totally fits. You know, and it's funny because like you look at like Petros has like this awesome look and everything he looks like a he looks like a badass peter pan really but then you look at his face throughout the course of the story and it's like this kid's a monster like he is an absolute yeah. psycho so it's it's really cool um the fairies i mean you again you can see i believe um, yeah this is hellabelle on the cover um that i'm showing for those watching the live stream she's got a really cool look so do the other two like tinkerbell like characters that we see um they look pretty badass and then the the, the wayward boys and and the quote-unquote pirates they look like absolute trash, absolute messes. So it's like it's 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 a bizarre story with bizarre characters, bizarre art, and um, some in, cool art. But man, like I read this first issue and I was like, I'm definitely going to be doing this on the show. I had to you know finish it to confirm it, but um, I would say uh, I think issue two was like, issue one and issue two were kick ass. I think three was good, four was really good, and then five was really good. And the ending. The ending, like I said, it was open ending. I'm, not, I'm just going to leave it there. But um, you know, th th talk about a first issue really hooking you. This one absolutely did that for me. 100%. Make this a TV show. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. right? That'd I be awesome. I mean, it, it's not like they haven't done it before. You know, you've got your Supernatural, and you had the um, you had that show there with all the other um, Ever oh, After or whatever yeah. the fuck it was called. I know what or, you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, make this a show. I think it'd be fucking badass. Yeah, I think you could do it like they're doing with um with Sean Lewis's thumbs. You could easily go and kind of yeah, yeah. Like you only have the five issues here. If they want to do more, they absolutely could. Um, but if not, turn it into a show and then just use this as your foundation. And you don't even need to get to the ending in the first season of, of this right. book. That would actually make a lot less sense. Leave it at that. Yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, so I I I don't know if this is on Hoopla. I did not check. You know, I, I got all the single issues from my old comic shop, but what? No, you what? didn't buy. I had to fucking buy some of these for you, didn't I? You had to you had to pick up the one on Comicsology. Yes, you had to pick that one up for me. Yes, thank yeah. you very much. Credit to Doc. That one, yes, credit to, credit to Joe. Sorry, you you know you don't get enough credit on this show. In all <laughs> I fairness. don't. Yeah, I don't. So. Not for Hoopla. Not for. <laughs> I was just say, wait a minute. I give you all the credit for you know Instagram warranted, totally warranted. I was like, what are you talking about? You don't. I get don't credit. get it for Hoopla. Uh, I don't mm. get it for Good Asian. I don't get it for Good Asian. You don't deserve it. You stole that from me, and I don't know what you're complaining about Hoopla for. That is my thing. <laughs> it's always been my thing. Um, but anyways, um, so never, never. You can. The second issue is on Comicsology for sure. That's the where I had to read that one. I have all the other single issues. Um, Got to double check on that one. But it's definitely – it's one that's going to be hard to come by. Got to keep your eyes peeled for a few from Heavy Metal, um, which I know sounds weird. I'll be I'll keep tabs on it because um, this is a book that I think a lot of people can really enjoy. And it's just it's just like a random-ass read, but it's so, it's so good and it's so fucked up, man. Yeah, love it. Love it. Yeah. Love it. I love it because, again, these are two – like really you know fairly small publishers that we don't really dive into a whole ton and nope. two phenomenal books i mean there's so there's a thing though too like if you ever like take a look there's like there's like at least at least a dozen other like small like really small independent studios that mm. i'm sure there's there's definitely got to be some diamonds in the rough there yeah well there's you know, one from Zenoscope, uh source point press yeah 
Yep. Right. There's a that, lot. So there's a ton. So that, that, that this was a lot of fun because um, mm. these books, like I said, were both so both both sound like fucking home runs. Mm. Right. Uh, gun honey is definitely one people know more about. But if you like, if you don't, if you're not like in the weeds like we are with this, there's a good chance that you missed it. Um, like if you're a more casual comic reader, I would yeah. say. Um, so these are two books that people won't you you, you won't be looking for. But like right. when you find them, you're gonna be like, oh, well. Yeah. This is, yeah. these are actually, you know what, these are kind of books that could make you change yeah, as a comic reader, like could really get you to dig in more to some of that indie stuff that's right. out there. Cause you don't, cause you just, you don't know yeah. what they can do. With the you world. might be just be a Marvel DC image person. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's, that's why we do the show because we love, we love finding shit like this. And uh, these books are the epitome of that. You're right. Yeah. These yeah. books are the epitome of the show. hundred percent. 